Now speaking, Louis Gerhardi, Vice President, Corporate Development. Fermi Wang, President and CEO of Amberella, provided a business update for Q1 of fiscal year 2024. Despite the semiconductor industry downturn, they are continuing to develop their AI business. The AI market is still early in development with many technologies and applications emerging. In FY 2023, AI already represented 45% of total revenue and is expected to reach 60% this year with the CV2 family becoming the dominant driver. The CV3 platform is a major leap forward offering 5 to 20 times higher ASP than the CV2 family. Amberella has partnered with Continental to jointly develop a level 4 fallback system for commercial vehicles and has extended their partnership for system development. In Q1, Amberella introduced their CV72S SOAP for mainstream enterprise and public class security cameras. They also received multiple new product awards from companies such as Motorola, Verkata, iPro, Axis, Dalmier, Alarm.com, GAC, and Geely Zeker. Brian White, CFO, discussed the financial results and outlook for Q2. Revenue is slightly ahead of expectations with AI expected to be a majority of revenue in fiscal year 2024. Operating profits from video processors in the CV2 family are being reinvested into the CV3 platform, which will drive growth in the future. Now speaking, Brian White, Chief Financial Officer. For the first quarter of fiscal year 2024, Amberella reported revenue of $62.1 million, down 25% from the prior quarter and 31% year-over-year. Non-GAAP gross margin was 63.1%, in line with the midpoint of the prior guidance range. Non-GAAP operating expense for the quarter was $46.2 million, slightly below the prior guidance range. Net interest and other income was $1.3 million, driven by a higher cash balance and returns on cash invested. Non-GAAP tax provision was $300,000 or minus 5.5% of pre-tax income. Non-GAAP net loss was $6 million or 15 cent loss per diluted share. Cash and marketable securities increased $20.5 million to $227.4 million. Accounts receivable decreased significantly, driving strong cash from operations of $22 million. Capital expenditures for tangible and intangible assets were $2.3 million. Free cash flow was $31. 7% of revenue for the quarter and 6.4% on a trailing 12-month basis. Two logistics and ODM companies represented 10% or more of revenue in Q1, Weight Microelectronics, 49%, and Chikini, 16%. For the second quarter of fiscal year 2024, Amberella estimates revenue to be flat to Q1 and in the same range of $60 million to $64 million. Non-GAAP gross margins are expected to be in the range of 62.5% to 64.5%. Non-GAAP operating expenses are estimated to be in the range of $48 million to $50 million due to higher R&D tied to new product development activities. Net interest income is estimated to be approximately $1 million, non-GAAP tax expense to be approximately $700,000, and diluted share count to be approximately 39.7 million shares. Wells Fargo Securities Analyst Gary Mobley inquired, could you provide insight on how close we are to inventories returning to a normal level and comment on the China-related demand? Fermi Wang replied, Fermi here. Customer growth is healthy, but our silicon revenue from them has decreased by 15 to 20 percent yai. This situation persists and customers are not indicating that this inventory correction will end soon. We need to see new orders consistently increasing from multiple customers before we can be sure the market has recovered. Wells Fargo Securities Analyst Gary Mobley inquired, what can you tell us about the Continental win and its significance for automotive-grade wins? Fermi Wang replied, this automotive-grade win is a level 4 car and involves our CV3 soak in the software IP stack we are co-developing with Continental. We are also pursuing other design wins with tier 1s like Bosch, as well as in China for level 2 plus cars. At the Shanghai Auto Show this year, we introduced the CV72 Act platform which gave us optimism that we will be able to close design wins with faster time to revenue. Deutsche Bank analyst Ross Seymour inquired, can you provide us with an update on your company's projected revenue level and when we can expect to see new products introduced that will drive growth? Fermi Wang replied, we anticipate that the current inventory correction will be resolved shortly and our existing product line should then return to normal levels. Last quarter, one customer's revenue was about 25 to 30 percent lower than what we would consider to be its realistic level. We believe this level of revenue is a good indication of what the normal level of revenue should be once the inventory correction has been completed. 
Deutsche Bank analyst Ross Seymour inquired, when can we expect to see tailwinds from the investments made in the automotive sector, and what are the drivers of that growth? Fermi Wang replied, I believe the automotive industry has experienced a flat period due to inventory correction, which has caused decreased revenue over the last two quarters. However, I am confident that once the industry's inventory correction is complete, revenue will show an upward trend. Additionally, I anticipate increased revenue growth as the Otis and Level 2 Plus markets enter production. Robert W. Baird and company analyst Tristan Gera inquired, can you provide insight into the inventory correction and any potential market share shift due to Chinese companies diversifying away from U.S. supply? Are there any signs that the ramp in China is not expected at the pace you anticipated a year ago? Is the inventory correction more pronounced than other companies, who are mainly dealing with smartphone and PC-centric issues? Fermi Wang replied, given the geopolitical situation, I believe the automotive market is far less affected than the security sector. The Chinese government has not mandated that automotive OEMs exclusively use Chinese components, which explains why high-end and middle-end automotive components in the Chinese market are mostly U.S. components. This, combined with the superior performance efficiency of U.S. solutions, suggests that we won't see a major downturn in China's automotive business. Robert W. Baird and company analyst Tristan Gera inquired, do you have all the pieces necessary to move into L2 Plus and L3 applications? Are customers considering your company size when looking at design wins or is it purely based on chip performance? How would you address any customer concerns about product roadmap for the next five years? Fermi Wang replied, I believe our product roadmap is well suited for level 2 plus and level 3 cars. Our hardware and software offerings are comprehensive, allowing customers to pick and choose the best components for their needs. We are partnering with industry leaders like Conti to leverage their scale and expertise. While competing against larger companies may be a challenge for us, we are confident that these collaborations will help us stay competitive in this market. Stiefel Financial Corporation analyst Tors Vonberg inquired, could you please explain the difference between the CV3AD and the CV3AC in terms of functionality and ASVs? Fermi Wang replied, CV3AD and CV72AC are both based on the same architecture, the CV3 architecture. They are both AI inference processors, however, CV3AD is designed for chip-level ASEAL while CV72AC is designed for system-level ASEAL. The main difference is that the latter is targeted for the Chinese market, where consumers are more likely to accept system-level ASEAL. Stiefel Financial Corporation Analyst Tors Vonberg inquired, could you please elaborate a little bit more on the design win for the software IP modules and how it is accounted for? Fermi Wang replied, we are partnering with Condi to combine our software solutions and create a complete stack. Our strengths in video and radar perception are complemented by Condi's expertise in system-level solutions and autograde software. This approach gives us a competitive edge and we are open to similar partnerships with other OEMs. Stiefel Financial Corporation Analyst Tors Vonberg inquired, what is the nature of the revenue accounting, module sale or IP? Fermi Wang replied, we have decided to split the software revenue in half between our two companies. This will be beneficial to both parties and will provide an equitable solution. Rosenblatt Securities Analyst Kevin Cassidy inquired, can you elaborate on how your AI server performance compares to NVIDIA A100 and what tools you have in place to enter the cloud inference market? Fermi Wang replied, the similarity between our automotive market and the new AI server market is that they both utilize neural networks on our chip. We have the expertise and software tools necessary to port a neural network onto our chip, but optimizing for larger LLM networks requires fine-tuning. Fortunately, our advantage is that we already have a working silicon kit demonstration with low power consumption that few others can claim. With the extra resource we are able to put into this task, we believe our efforts will be limited and we will achieve great performance. Rosenblatt Securities Analyst Kevin Cassidy inquired, what is the go-to-market strategy? Are you targeting a few prominent customers or many? Fermi Wang replied, No, I think we should focus on identifying the areas where we have the most potential for success. We are currently engaged in conversations with our customers to determine their needs and find solutions. Later, we will discuss strategy. Our goal is to identify the areas where we can leverage our chip and software offerings to provide immediate relief to those who have experienced difficulty with current solutions. We have learned that partnering with customers who feel the most pain from existing solutions is key to our success. Needham and company analyst Quinn Bolton inquired, Fermi and Brian, what is your best estimate for how many more quarters it will take to work down current inventory levels? Will this be apparent by the end of your fiscal year or calendar year, or could it take longer? 
Brian White replied, Quinn, we said that our guidance of 62 million for Q1 was likely the bottom in terms of inventory-related impacts. We don't expect it to get worse, but forecasting the recovery is challenging due to reschedules and cancellations. Our visibility is limited as to how revenue will shape up in Q3. Our confidence in providing a forecast is lower than normal. Needham and Company Analyst Quinn Bolden inquired, can you provide any framework on how we should be thinking about seasonal trends in the second half of the year and what factors might influence it? Brian White replied, typically, we'd expect to see an increase in the third quarter. However, due to current circumstances, we do not have the visibility or confidence to provide a specific figure at this time. Needham and Company Analyst Quinn Bolden inquired, can you discuss how the Level 4 win with Continental came together, especially since the initial partnership announced late last year was for Level 2 Plus? Did it come together quickly due to expansion at CES? Fermi Wang replied, I'm pleased to report that the collaboration between Conti and us is progressing rapidly. We're grateful to Conti for putting this together and it has not only increased customer confidence in our joint software stack, but also our Level 2 Plus design win momentum. With this Shanghai Auto Show and our CV72 AC announcement, we've seen successful sampling of components and software to customers recently. This gives us confidence that we'll see a Level 2 Plus design win this year, resulting in quick revenue returns. Additionally, our roadmap allows us to continue addressing this market. All in all, we remain focused on delivering a successful Level 2 Plus design win. Imperial Capital Analyst Brian Ruttenberg inquired, could you provide an update on depreciation and amortization expenses? Do you anticipate DSO stabilizing or continuing to decline in the coming quarters? Brian White replied, Q1 saw a normalization of shipments versus Q4, providing a $22 million benefit to cash flow. DSOs are expected to remain at similar levels in the coming quarters, so we won't get additional benefit from stair step down. We anticipate a non-GAAP loss in Q2 due to lower revenue and free cash flow than Q1. Visibility into second half revenues is low. Roth Capital Partners analyst Suji De Silva inquired, what was the geography of the L4 commercial vehicle customer mentioned earlier? Fermi Wang replied, we didn't disclose the information requested. Our customer has requested that we keep it private for the time being. Roth Capital Partners analyst Suji De Silva inquired, can you provide some insight into what drives the ASP range of 5 to 20 times? Fermi Wang replied, the difference between the low and high end of our chip range is quite significant. Our 655 chip, for example, is about $100, whereas the higher end chips can cost up to $400 or more. Having a variety of chips in this range is essential for an automotive roadmap to address the different performance levels needed for Level 4, Level 3, and Level 2 Plus vehicles. Exam BNP Paribas analyst David O'Connor inquired, what type of customers are you targeting for AI inference and what time frame do you anticipate reaching revenue? Fermi Wang replied, our current focus is on the edge server side, which includes enterprise customers and those using their own neural networks. For those running open AI or other very large models, our chip may not be the best solution right now. We are targeting software ISVs that use driving different neural net models, either for their own code or for the enterprise level. The competition in this market is high, but we have a great advantage in terms of power consumption and total system costs, allowing us to offer healthier content. Fermi Wang replied, the time to revenue is approximately two years. We need to have a demo running and a software tool running for the customer to port, and then we can discuss design win before beginning to generate revenue. This is a wild guess, and could be longer or shorter depending on the customer's needs. Exam BNP Paribas analyst David O'Connor inquired, could you please clarify if the new software development team is funded within the existing OPEX envelope, or would there need to be a step up? Fermi Wang replied, our plan is to use our expertise and team to efficiently port neural networks onto CV3. We have a successful history of helping customers with this process, so the best way to approach it is to fund the project internally and designate an internal resource. We want to focus on areas that are important to us, such as security camera sales, continuing momentum with existing design wins, and securing CV3 designs with OEMs. Any other resources needed for this project will be considered as a trade-off. Bank of America Merrill Lynch analyst Blake Friedman inquired, are you comfortable with your current cash level to support increased R&D investments over the next few quarters, or do you anticipate needing to raise additional capital? Brian White replied, we have no requirement for raising additional capital. Our current cash balance is solid, with no debt. We have a history of generating positive free cash flow, and so there is no necessity for raising more funds. 
Bank of America Merrill Lynch analyst Blake Friedman inquired, given the current revenue levels and split between IoT and auto, what are the puts and takes of the gross margin for this quarter and beyond? Brian White replied, I believe our long-term model provides a realistic expectation for our gross margins, however recent results have been higher. We anticipate that trend to continue until we pursue larger automotive opportunities which could result in lower gross margins. For now in the foreseeable future, we expect to sustain our current and potentially higher gross margins as we work through the inventory correction process. Cohen and Company Analyst Joshua Buckhalter inquired, could you provide initial feedback on how CV3 is performing in the consumer passenger vehicle market? How are Kanye and Bosch positioning their CV3-based solutions to compete against established competitors in Central Otis? Fermi Wang replied, we have strong relationships with Bosch and Conti, which are already beginning to pay off. We've seen success on level 4 projects and our engineers have been collaborating on software development. Business development efforts with the two companies have helped us address scaling issues and continue to be the right strategy for design wins in the US and Europe. We anticipate that our first level 2 plus design will come from China, as we demonstrated a powerful chip at the Shanghai Auto Show. Our demo was unique in that it ran transformer neural networks efficiently on a lower end chip, something none of our competitors can do. AI and neural network performance is highly valued in China, so we expect to see several design wins this year. Cohen and Company Analyst Joshua Buckhalter inquired, can you provide more insight into the inventory correction related to auto and how any weakness in the China EV market impacted results during the quarter? Fermi Wang replied, inventory control in the auto industry is not as impacted as IoT cloud and IoT space. Although some customers have seen a decrease, we expect that when the inventory correction is complete, auto will resume growth. Oppenheimer and company analyst Martin Yang inquired, do you expect the majority of your automotive and IoT customers to opt for Oculi integration with CV72? Fermi Wang replied, I believe the adoption of radar systems in the IoT space will be slower than in the auto space as the core market is still moving towards radar technology, but not as quickly. In auto, radar solutions are ubiquitous as it has become a requirement for any level 2 plus system. For CV72 Act, we are currently focusing on video integration and radar integration will come later in the development process. Fermi Wang replied, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to further discussions in the next quarter.